Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Bennington Made. I'm your host, Matt Harrington with the Bennington Chamber of Commerce, and with me as always is Cat TV. We're about to go meet a couple that started a business over 40 years ago. They make doll figurines. There are John Wright dolls. There are world-class, world-famous dolls that are made some iconic right in line with The Wizard of Oz or Paddington Bear. They make dolls not just for Hollywood, they also make dolls for people that just want to buy dolls. As we enter the holiday season here, why don't we go check in with John and Susan and figure out how they make our John Wright dolls right here in Bennington, Vermont. John, how are you? Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Susan, well, how are you? Good. So uh, we're here at R. John Wright Dolls, uh, and give us a little bit of the history. How did it? How did it all come to being? How did it start? What was the great idea here? Um, well, it gets told quite often in the doll world that I lost my job at a hardware store, <laughs> and then I made my first doll, and then from there the thing just mushroomed. Susan came on board to make the dolls with me in our apartment. We actually started in Brattleboro, Vermont. Okay. And so we really feel like Vermonters at heart with, as far as our business is sure. concerned. Susan and I only work on the prototype. Okay. And once the prototype is established, then it gets taken over to the production area. And we've never sold our designs to another company to produce. We've never had anything made at another facility. So when anybody gets one of our dolls, they know exactly where it came from. <laughs> and uh, that's one of the things we're most proud of. So I'm really happy to be involved with this Made in Vermont series that you've started. Yeah. Because the Made in Vermont aspect of our production is one of our proudest achievements. So why don't we start to go on the tour. You show us kind of right from the beginning how the dolls are actually formed. Uh, where the artisanship kind of comes in and then how do we finally get them out the door to customers and... Well, then it customers. would begin up in the design area. Okay. That's where the ideas come from. Let's go. Okay. This is the design studio on the second floor. This is where Susan and I spend, what, 80% of our time. I was going to say they lock you away right in here until you come up with a new design, right? Definitely. And when well, it begins with the concept. What do we, what do we want to do? How do we want to do it comes later. The first thing is trying to establish the next project to focus on. Once we focus on a project, we put the pictures up on this board here, and it starts to kind of get the creative juices flowing. So there's a lot of different projects here, by the way, but that, that gets it started. I do most of the sculpting. Susan pitches in from time to time. Um, this, the projects begin in clay. This is modeler's clay right here. The head of the dog is clay, and this body and limbs are clay. That's the first step after we sketch it out and so forth. Then the first time it starts to come into three dimension is when I make the pieces out of clay. From there, the, play, the pieces get cast in wax. This is a hard modeler's wax that the head is made out of here on this project. And the reason that we switch over from clay to wax is so that you can do all this fine, detailed mm. work on it, and it's hard, and it won't get messed up or anything uh, when we send it to the foundry. So after this thing, is these limbs, torso, head, animals, all the parts are made out of wax. Then they get sent to the foundry, and uh, the foundry makes metal molds. And the metal molds are needed for us to mold the item out of felt, which is a lost art, basically, uh, that we learned ourselves from trial and error. They were made in like the 1920s in Italy, began this idea of molding felt so that it looked like it was not felt. Uh, but we had to tr do trial and error to figure out our uh, way toward that accomplishment. 
And right now we're working on the Hummel collection. Okay. Where we study the figurines that were made in the 30s and 40s and then translate them into all felt wow. dolls that, you know, capture the uh, artistry of Hummel. Here's some of the aspects that have to be figured out when you're doing this uh, type of a project. Not only do you have to figure out the doll, the face, the painting, the gestures of the arms. Uh, her arms are jointed so that she can hold her instrument. Um, the wings, the airbrushing, and then the lamb all in itself is, you know, a separate little project because uh, you have to come up with the patterns for how that little lamb will be and what fabrics it'll be made out of. The mandolin, we make all our own accessories. Uh, this is made out of wood. Um, and so here's some, you know, basic patterns. How are we going to build this? You know, how is it going to be done? And there's quite a bit of engineering uh, mm. that goes into that. And so I figure out all of those sort of things. And then we go across to production and teach our very skilled crew how to make all of our uh, imagery and dreams come true. Right. So the first steps is to get the fabric laid out and then to cut it out. Okay. A lot of that is done with dies, which are like cookie cutters. And these are made specially for us um, by a dye company based on the patterns that we okay. send them. Uh, these are dyes for mice right now. We're cutting a bunch of mice for a St. Nicholas mouse that we're producing for this Christmas season. And uh, so Karen is going to use our large hydraulic press and make all sorts of noise to uh, do that. We like noise, <laughs> we like that, don't we? It's called a clicker press, okay. and it was predominantly used, these kind of machinery in uh, shoemaking factories, which okay. they don't have in this country anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. You can see the hands here that have been cut with the dies. And then our seamstresses have to sew all those little fingers with an industrial sewing machine, which is not easy. <laughs> stitch by stitch little tiny stitches. Um, you always have to make sure that everything is at the right angle. Right, matches up perfectly. What do we have over here? Okay, these are the uh, gowns for the Hummel Angel that we've been discussing. So they're made out of felt and they uh, have all been cut and are getting sewn. And they have hand hems and whatnot and then they go down for their coloration. So this sort of flesh colored gown will become that rosy wonderful mm -hmm. gown that you saw on the prototype. These hands have to be turned, each finger individually. And uh, Marianne is one of the few people that I know I have ever employed that can do it so effortlessly. So once the fingers are turned, then the whole hand is turned right side out. As you can see, it's a lot of labor goes into the dolls that we make, and people want to know why are the, why are the prices so high? Well, it's the labor. Yeah. It's not what they're made of, although we do use the best in quality materials, but it's the time. Time is what takes up all of the expense. So, 
Uh, how many hands? Now that hand will then be taken to the stuffing area and there will be little tufts of kapok put in with uh, needle nose pliers into each finger. So each finger is individually stuffed and then it uh, goes from there to other stages which I'll be showing you. So this is several layers of starched fabric. This is used in uh, the millinery business for making hats. Ladies hats used to have this underneath um, for a foundation. And this was something that was done many, many years ago that is not used much anymore. But it works very well for uh, molding parts for the dolls and their faces. And so this is the under part for the dolls' bodies, faces. The felt is placed over the mouth of the mold, which is the face of the doll. This under fa fabric face is placed into the felt, and the felt is starched with a special starch that we have uh, come up with over the years. Great. And then this press. We had these designed and built especially for us, and they're pneumatic, and they have heated upper and lower platens, and we can regulate the, the speed of it coming down, the amount of pressure, and the heat. This is the face. It has this configuration of wings around it, and then it is sewn in such a way that it becomes A head, and then this head, once it's turned, see it begins to start to look more like a total head. So after the heads are sewn, they have to be flipped right side out, and then there are some hand stitches that have to happen to get these uh, sewn up so they can be stuffed and then molded again for detail. It's just, you know, as we enter the holiday time, I mean, there really is Santa's factory up here. It is. Yeah. <laughs> you're giving the big guy some help. That's what you're doing. Yeah, well, actually. He stops in on the 24th, loads up the dolls, right? Most of these are collected by adults, so this is for the adult yes, children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the adults. Yeah. <coughs> Workshop. These are stuffed sewn, turned, and stuffed. And this is a wooden joint ball that we put into it. Now this is different from the fit molding of the faces and the torsos because those are shell molding and this is a stuffed limb that will be formed in the heated molds to give it detail like toes and knees and what have you. So you'll be able to see uh, the transformation of this very crude looking little leg in a moment. Great. So the stuffed starched leg is placed into the heated leg mold. It has to be carefully manipulated so that it'll fit in there properly without pinching it. And then the pneumatic press will come down encasing that leg in the mold.
again, great deal of time, but this is all worked out in the studio before it has come down here. We also make all our own shoes here, and uh, these shoes are made out of leather, and just like a real cobbler would make a shoe. Uh, we have our shoe lasts here. Okay, I just take this off a minute. So these are made out of steel, so they're very hard, and these are made based on the sculpts that John does, and then they're cast. And that is how we form the shoes. Angela's going to sort of show you how she does that. They're very detailed. Even the little bows have horse hair on them. So these angels are now getting their violins uh, attached. And this is the finishing, you know, touch where we make sure everything is as it should be, that the doll is well constructed. And it gets its hairdo touched up and what have you before it goes into its deluxe gift box and then goes to its new home. So we just got a glimpse into how our John Wright dolls actually make their dolls right here in Bennington, Vermont. Uh, we wanna thank John and Susan for having us here to check out their Santa's Little Helper workshop as they prepare for the holiday season coming up. We hope that you got a, uh, to learn right from design to implementation to getting those products right out the door. How Bennington, Vermont is making an impact uh, across the world with many of the great products that are made right here in Bennington, including our John Wright dolls. Make sure you stop by and take a tour, check out how their dolls are made, and join us next time on another episode of Bennington Made.